This morning I want to look into the third book of John. The best way to find it is to go to Revelation and go backwards past uh, Jude, and it's right after, going backwards, it's right after Jude. If you start at Genesis, I'll be done by the time you get there. <laughs> the book of John, the third uh, third book of John, uh, there's just one, one chapter beginning at the, the second verse. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that you all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. Dear friends, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out receiving no help from the pagans, we ought therefore to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. Working together for truth, working together in unity is, is a vital task of the, the church. It's, it is even more important that, than working together, it's important that we work together for truth that the church, whether we're talking about this congregation this morning, the, the church at Wadesville, or the, the larger church community, there should be a, a sense of unity among us, working together for truth. The church must be that area. It really needs to be that place in life that we can lay all the other differences that may separate us aside. We lay all those aside. Um, uh, we lay politics aside. We lay backgrounds aside. We, we lay our, our preferences to the side so that we can work together for a common goal and a common purpose, and that being the, the furtherance of the kingdom of God. You know, as I've talked to, to different individuals, in, in, even in this congregation, that, that we come, uh, although we're, we worship this morning under uh, the banner of a, of a Christian church, we, we come from various backgrounds. Some from a Baptist background, um, uh, Catholic, Presbyterian, Methodist, Pentecostal. It, it really doesn't matter uh, uh, that what those backgrounds are, as long as we're coming together and working for the truth of the gospel under the banner of a, as a child of God, to grow together, to minister into our families, to our communities, and to our world as a representative of Christ. And John is, that's what he's suggesting, that's what he's recommending in this very short book this morning. To encourage us to have a, a welcoming spirit. And that welcoming spirit extends to uh, the person that across uh, the aisle from us that we've worshipped with for the last decade. Or to a, a visitor or a stranger that comes into our, uh, into our midst, into our church this morning. That same type of welcoming spirit an attitude has to, it has to exist. I've visited those churches before that, that you walk in and, and no one shakes your hand and you can come in and sit down in the, in the back row and, and no one greets you and, um, and no one talks to you and, um, and, and no one acknowledges that you were, that you were there. Um, you might fill out a card and you might get a, a, a form letter in the, in the mail sometime later, um, which uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't send a, a letter saying thank you for attending. However, I, I never want to be that church that, 
that, that someone comes in and, and before that we decide whether or not we extend any kind of welcome or, or greeting, that we, that we size them up to see if, um, uh, if they fit whatever mold or standard that my, I might have pre-established in my, in my own mind. Uh, God, let us never be uh, that type of body of believers. Let us not be that, that church that's built on, on cliques or uh, like, a, like a club that you have to know the, uh, the secret handshake to, to be a part of. But let us be a, a, a body of believers that truly love one another, that serve God. The very tone of John's letter this morning is that of a, a friend, a, a fellow laborer for the kingdom of God. The truth of, of, of God is, is what he says is the, the thing that binds us together. And he's writing to a particular church saying, you know, uh, when visitors come in or when, when, other, when other Christ believers are, are traveling through uh, your community, then welcome them into your, their home. There was no super eight. Um, and, and travel took long periods of, of time um, in that day and age. And, and when a, another believer comes into your community, welcome them into your home. Welcome them into your, um, into your, your worship service. And when it's time for them to move on, um, send them off with, uh, with, with prayer. Uh, send them off with, um, with the provisions they might need for the next leg of, of their journey. John is really suggesting that that is what it means to be Christian. That's what it means to, uh, to worship and work together for the truth of the, the gospel. That that's the way, the attitude that, we were, that we're supposed to have. Now, uh, there's a portion of John's letter, that, that first um, section that, uh, about prospering in health and, and, and spiritual prosperity. And there, there are some folks that have used that to, uh, that have taken John's well wishes and tried to, to build a, what they call a prosperity doctrine out of it. And that, pros, and that, uh, that philosophy kind of goes like this. The more faithful you are, the more you'll be financially blessed. And there are those that have, that have promoted, well, that if you have enough faith to give large sums of money, that God will, that will return that uh, to you. And unfortunately, there have been ministries funded and, and built on that type of philosophy. But what we need to understand this morning is that, uh, that, that God's command and, and what John is actually saying here is these are well wishes. It's like us saying, God bless you, or I wish you the best. To be, to be uh, perfectly honest, it's like saying, happy birthday. Now, when somebody tells you happy birthday, there is absolutely no guarantee that your birthday is going to be a great day. It's just a, a well-wishing. Um, and that's what, that's what John's saying, that, that my desire is that you prosper, that you prosper in health, that you have the things that you need, that you grow spiritually. And, and, and that should be the, uh, the wish of the church for everyone that we worship with and everyone that we encounter. And as much as possible, we should uh, help them achieve that to what degree that we're, that we're able to. But we also know that, uh, that in, our, in our world that the Scripture also points out that in this world that we'll have trouble. It's just, it's just part of it. But John goes on to rejoice in the good report that he's heard about this church. How that they love one another. How they're welcoming uh, to others. How they walk in the truth. And, and, and walking in, in truth in this life is a demonstration of our relationship with Christ. James teaches us that, uh, that having just heard the preached word or just reading the scripture is kind of like looking in a mirror. And, he, and if I can paraphrase, he says it this way, that 
we can look at ourselves in, a, in the mirror as we're getting ourselves ready and we walk away and we forget what we look like. We forget that reflection in the mirror, which is often how we live. And what, uh, what James says is that that true believer, that tr- true Christian, not only just receives the reflection of themselves in the mirror, but they take the words and the, um, the scripture and they hide it in their heart and they apply it to their heart and make the, na- the necessary changes uh, to be more like Christ. The scripture and the preached word should encourage us and inspire us to be more Christ-like. And as we walk in truth to serve the kingdom of God faithfully, we find those points of shared interest and faith with others and with other congregations, and we labor together within the church to welcome anyone who would come in and, uh, and seek Christ. We need to, to be that assembly, and, I'm, uh, and I, it, it thrills me that, that we are, that, that assembly that attempts to lead our, our children, to teach them and, and raise them up into uh, the Christians that we, uh, that we want to see them become. To welcome visitors into our, our midst, hoping that, uh, that we can help them and, and, and lead them to a closer relationship with God to accepting of Christ, repentance, baptism, all those things that's part of this, this Christian journey. And isn't, isn't just the role of the preacher or the teacher or the elder or the deacon, but the whole body. Now, I stopped reading this letter of John, because, um, the, but I want to talk about the second half of this letter as well. Because after he addresses the church, he also addresses that individual in the church that is not very welcoming. He closes this book by referring to the individual that's, well, not very warm-hearted. And unfortunately, we know that in the faith community as a whole that these folks exist. You know, each of us are on our own spiritual journey with Christ, if if you will. Some of us are excited and and growing in our relationship with God. Some of us might just at this point in time just be going through the motions. We're falling away just a little bit. Or we're hurt and disappointed by a, a fellow labor. Or we're brand new and we're learning and, um, and growing. And I've... I grew up thinking that, that our spiritual journey should be, um, uh, however gradual it is, but it should be continually ascending. We should, as Christians, it should always be an upward journey. Not necessarily how fast, but it should always be going in, a, in the upward direction. But as I've lived, I've realized that that's not always the case. As I said, sometimes we're excited and and growing and sometimes we're falling away just a little bit and sometimes we're just a little bit stagnant going through the motions. And sometimes those less warm-hearted folks have have trouble accepting that, have trouble uh, being welcoming and and, uh, realizing that, that we're all growing in this relationship and in this, in this walk with God. And, and there are times that we're thinking, well, if they're not conforming and if they don't think just like me and they don't believe just like me or they don't look just like me or they don't dress just like me, I've got to be a little suspicious and, and, um, and cautious about them. And I'm going to make a confession that there, there was a time, there was a day and time in my life that, uh, uh, that I hate to say that I wasn't warm hearted, but, um, but that I thought people needed to, to conform. They needed to look like me, 
and dress like me, wear their hair like me, and uh, talk like me, and think like me. Now, I'm not saying the world wouldn't be a better place if everybody did. <laughs> However, that's just not the truth. It's just not, uh, it's just not the way that it is. And you know what the best thing to change that kind of attitude is, and I hope that no one ever goes through this, but if the bottom falls out of your preconceived notions, it can, it can be very life-changing. And when our, when our life and our thoughts and our, our faith are, are challenged, we realize that sometimes this journey is as much of an obstacle course as it is a journey. It has, its, it has its ups, and it has its downs, and it, has its, uh, and it has its walls that have to either be gone over or, or underneath, through, over. And if we're truly laboring together in truth, then it's important that we take turns encouraging and strengthening those that need it right now. Because next time it may be me that, that needs it, that needs that encouragement and that, that strength. And I really think that that's the crux of what John was talking about here. To, he was commending this church and, and this individual that he addressed the letter to for being that type of Christian. And he does close with condemning that individual who who is not welcoming to those that don't fit what he wants. We simply look at the life of Jesus, and while he proclaimed truth, he did it with a spirit of love and compassion that compelled others to follow. Our spiritual health is not a reflection of our piety, or our righteousness, but our love of others and the love for truth as we seek to follow it. Our, uh, our prosperity is not measured in our health or our riches, but within our relationship with, with God and other believers. Our hospitality, if you will, our hospitality builds that bond. Others will hear about it. Others will see it. And as truth prevails, the, uh, the formula is that it compels others uh, to want some of what we've got. God bless you this morning.